As a desktop developer, one of my primary responsibilities is to display a UI to my end user. Now in WPF, I use XAML and C Sharp via a user control or a window. Well, obviously user controls in Windows do not exist in Angular. So what are my options? What do I use in Angular to display my UI? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you. Roll the intro. Creating a UI in Angular is very similar to how I would create a UI in WPF. I normally use a user control, and this user control will have a XAML file for my UI markup, it will have a C-sharp file for any properties and logic, and it may even have a resource dictionary which would contain any type of styling information for my user control. Well, in Angular, we use what's called a component. A component has an HTML file, which is used for any UI markup, it has a TypeScript file, which is used for its properties and logic, and then it uses a CSS file for all its styling information. Let's go ahead and jump into Visual Studio to see just how similar these two are. On the left side of my screen, I have a WPF application with a user controlled called Sample. It also has a resource dictionary called Sample Resources that contains styling information. On the right side of my screen, I have the Angular application that we created in the last video. Let's go ahead and compare the Angular app component to that of the sample user control in the WPF application. I'm gonna start by opening up the app component.typescript file. I like to think of this file as the code behind of the component. And the reason I like think that way is because if I come over to WPF and open up the sample.xaml.cs, the code behind of the sample user control, we can see a lot of similarities. Let's start at the bottom of the TypeScript file. First, we can see that we have a class that we're exporting called app component. Now this app component also has a property in it called title. So within this class, we're gonna define all the properties, methods, and events required for our component to run. This is extremely similar, if not the exact same, of a user control. We can see that we have a class, in this case called sample, and within this class, we're gonna define all the properties, methods, and events required for the user control to function. Next, I wanna move up a few lines in the TypeScript file and look at this little weird syntax with this little at symbol and then component. This is actually called a decorator. Now this decorator is telling Angular how we're going to treat this class that we're exporting. In this case, we're gonna treat this as a component. And because we're treating this as a component, we have to provide some information in this decorator. Before I get to that information, I wanna move up one more line to the very top of the TypeScript file where you see import component from Angular slash core. You can think of this as a using statement. Essentially, we are importing the objects that are required for this component to function. In this case, we are importing the component from the Angular slash core module so we can actually use the decorator for this component. That is extremely similar to a using statement inside of the code behind of our user control. We use using statements inside of C Sharp to locate objects and use objects within our class that are required for the user control to function. Now let's hop back inside of this component decorator. The first line here on line four you'll see is called a selector. Now this selector helps us determine how we're going to define these elements in HTML. So for example, we saw that this selector is called app root. So if we go ahead and open up the index.html, we can see within the body on line 12 where we have an element called app-root. That element is using the selector defined on line four to define an instance of this component. On line five, we have what's called a template URL. This is pointing to a file called app.component.html. So this points to the HTML file that represents the visual rendering of this component. This is extremely similar to the sample.xaml file of the user control in WPF. In WPF, the XAML is the markup that represents how this control is going to render. In this case, we're just rendering a text block. In Angular, it's using an HTML file. So if we open up the app.component.html file, we will see that we're using HTML markup to represent how we're going to render this component. As you can see, these are a one-to-one -one mapping with just a slightly different syntax. Instead of using XAML as you are here, you're using HTML. Next, if we go to line six where we see the style URLs, this is pointing to a CSS file. This file 
represents the styling information of your component. So if we open up the app.component.css file, we can see that there's no styling information in here. But I like to think of the CSS file as a direct mapping to a resource dictionary. The resource dictionary in XAML will contain all the styling information for your user control or elements within your user control so that it renders according to your design. That is the exact same thing that you would do in CSS. Now that we've seen just how similar an Angular component is to a WPF user control, let's create a new component and add it to our application. If you're a desktop developer, in WPF, when you want to add a new user control, you simply right click in your project, say add new user control. Well, of course, if you try to do the same thing in Visual Studio Code, you do not have that option. You only have new file, new folder. That means we have to hop into our terminal and use the Angular CLI to generate our component. So I'm going to toggle the terminal by typing control backtick. When the terminal appears, I'm going to type ng, g for generate, c for component, and then I'm going to provide a name for the component. In this case, I'm going to call it sample. When the command completes, you'll notice a number of things have happened. First, we have four new files. We have a new HTML file, we have a spec file, a TypeScript file, and a CSS file. We also made an update to the module.ts file. You'll also notice a new folder with the same name that you gave the component in the terminal. I'm going to take a moment to close Visual Studio since I'm done comparing against WPF. Let's go ahead and take a look at the sample folder which contains our component. We can see that all three files that are required for a component are there in this extra spec file. This is actually a test file which we do not need for this video, so we're going to delete it. Next, I want to mention we made a modification to the app.module.ts in which it added the sample component to the declaration section of our ng module. We'll talk more about modules in a later video, but just know whenever you create a component, you must declare that component in the declaration section of the ng module. This essentially says, hey, I'm going to use this component, so I'm just letting you know about it so you know what to do with it. So let's go back to our sample component.ts file. As you can see, this looks very similar to the app.component.ts file we just covered. In this case, we have our import statement where we're importing our component. We have our component decorator where we are defining our selector as app.sample. We have our template URL as sample.component.html and we have our style URL sample.component.css. Okay, well that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and open up the HTML file and we can see a paragraph and then sample works. I wanna go ahead and define this inside of some HTML. So let's take note of our selector app.sample and go into the app.component.html. I'm gonna go ahead and delete all of this markup, including this image. And in here, I'm gonna say app.sample. I'm gonna save it and then in the terminal, I'm gonna go npm start. This is going to compile and build our application and launch it inside of the browser. As you can see, our Angular application is now running in our browser. We have welcome to demo app. This is the markup from the app component. And then sample works. This is the markup from our sample component that we just added. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this. And let's go back to our HTML. So for example, I can say this sample works very well. Open our browser and we can automatically see that we are indeed editing the HTML that is responsible for rendering the sample component. If I wanted to style our component, I would come look at our style URL. I'm looking for a sample.component.css. So let's open up our CSS file and I'm going to add something to a paragraph. We'll set the color to say red. We'll save that and open up our browser. And we can see that the styling in the CSS file has been applied to our sample component. It's time. That's right. It's the time you guys have all been waiting for. It's time to announce the winner from last week's giveaway for the one year subscription to Infragistics Ultimate. So without further ado, the winner of last week's giveaway is Voldemort Thor. Congratulations. You are the winner. I will be contacting you very shortly on how to claim your license. If you'd like to learn how to take your desktop skills to the web while at the same time entering for a chance to win a one-year subscription to Infragistics Ultimate worth nearly $2,000, 
then subscribe to my channel, like this video, and make a comment below, and next week I'll announce another winner. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.